Engage. 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 Make it so. Make it so. Make it so. That's got to be the coolest command ever. I'm such a dork. When I was younger and uh, last week, whenever I would go running or biking, I would actually pretend that at some point my body becomes a starship and I would be like, maximum warp, engage. And then I would run or bike as fast as I could for, you know, a few seconds until my body reminds me that, nope, not a starship, getting pretty tired pretty quick. Anyway, not saying we're definitely going to see a starship traveling faster than the speed of of light anytime soon, but according to nasaspaceflight.com, NASA is claiming to have successfully tested a revolutionary new means of space travel that could maybe one day allow for such insane speed, and could one day allow humans to travel at speeds faster than light. The technology is based on the electromagnetic drive or EM drive, which converts electrical energy into thrust without the need for rocket fuel. The basic idea behind this technology is, like I mentioned before, to convert electrical energy into thrust without the fuel in rockets, which should technically be impossible because it violates the law of conservation of momentum that says momentum can only be changed by one of the forces described by Newton's laws of motion, which is why propellant is required in traditional rockets. Researchers from the US, UK, and China have demonstrated EM drive over the past few decades, but their results have been controversial as no one has been exactly sure how it works. But now NASA has built an EM drive that actually works and more importantly, works in conditions that are like that of real space. According to the NASA Space Flight Forum, it was discovered that when lasers were fired into the EM drive's resonance chamber, some of the beams were traveling faster than the speed of light. The EM drive provides thrust to a spacecraft by bouncing microwaves around in a closed container. Solar energy provides the electricity to power the microwaves, which eliminates the need for fuel. Which is kind of strange because my microwave oven bounces around microwaves in a closed container as well, and all I can really do is heat up food. Researchers say with the new drive, travel to the moon could be as little as four hours, far off from the speed of light, but you know, not too bad. You know, I was thinking about this and uh, yeah, I would like to go to the moon. I mean, from photos, it seems kind of boring, just a bunch of dust, but it would be cool to go and, you know, just jump around and maybe see what that whole dark side of the moon thing is all about. Anyway, if such a technology can be implemented in future spacecrafts, the implications could mean smaller sized satellites as they will no longer need to carry fuel and the humans could also travel further into space. When we discuss the possibility of breaking the light speed barrier, the bulk of scientific knowledge can concludes that it is impossible. And this technology seems way different than the warp drive from all the Star Trek movies, which supposedly uses massive amounts of energy to encapsulate an object in a bubble and actually warps the area around it. The ship is pushed along as space time expands and contracts around it. But regardless, I found this topic really interesting. I mean, the possibilities of people one day being able to explore the universe seems so awesome to me. I mean, if a spaceship was available right now to go on a continuous mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. I would sign up tomorrow, but I'm not into that whole one-way trip to go die on Mars thing. That's just crazy to me. And I do want to mention that as I was reading up on this story, and this story was covered a lot by a bunch of different publications, a lot of the comments were just people saying how this news item was crap because traveling beyond the speed of light is impossible. And of course, we are all entitled to our own opinions. And my opinion is that new scientific discoveries are made all the time. Let's not be so arrogant to think that we know everything about everything. Then we are basically setting limitations on ourselves. I mean, we're all human. We're always evolving. We're always learning new things about ourselves, about our world, about our universe. I mean, let's say I somehow went back in time and uh, told a group of scientists from a few hundred years ago that I have a show where I appear in front of tens of thousands of people in little flocked rectangular box looking things that answer to the name Surrey. They would think I'm insane. They may even burn me alive. So a little segue, guys, I've read your comments about uh, burning the haunted objects could release the evil from 
from within. Now with holy fire, we'll take a page out of Sam and Dean's book and add some salt before you burn it. Ooh, how about this? When this super fast spaceship eventually gets built, we put all these evil possessed dolls on board and just, you know, shoot it into space. Can you imagine these dolls waking up and looking out the window and they see Pluto? I think then even the demon dolls will start freaking out. Or maybe some alien race finds them. They should totally make a movie called Chucky vs. Aliens where Annabelle haunts Martians. Maybe that's what happened to the whole event horizon thing. Alright, if you guys have no idea why I'm talking about evil dolls, watch my last video. And don't even watch Event Horizon, just, just don't do it. It's a horrible, horrible, frightening movie. Alright guys, let me know if a spaceship is available tomorrow to go exploring the universe, would you jump on board? Also, I think I would make an awesome starship captain because first of all, I'm diplomatic. Second, I'm kind of like a Vulcan because I do have a theory that all Vulcans are Asians because you know they all have bowl cuts and they're all good at science and math. And finally, I'm like Andrew Zimmern. I'll eat almost anything. So if we ever meet an alien race and they invite us to dinner and everything on the table is just a bunch of bizarre looking dishes, don't worry, I got this. This way, we won't offend anybody. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Check out my other channels in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.